Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And tonight, show, I'm pleased to have a returning guest who I had on when he was first named the head coach uh, for the University of St. Joe's for the Blue Jays for the baseball program. Uh, Adam Goss is with me, and you know he's back on to be able to talk about the inaugural season of which the program is now going about and doing their thing with their JV portion of their season. And then next year with their new field, which I'm sure we'll talk about, Oh, yeah. uh, quite a bit uh that will be their inaugural season as far as the ncaa is concerned of which wins and losses will count but adam i appreciate you coming up yeah thanks chris you appreciate know it's it. always fun always fun being able to talk baseball and just you know program itself too uh adam just kind of catch me up a little bit on what's been going on since the last time that we talked yeah so last time we talked I, you know we were talking a little bit before this it was like april may um i mean our roster wasn't even done yet you know, we kind of pushed that up to the wire. We got, ended up getting 32 guys, um, you know, on campus. They moved in in August. Um, and we kind of went after it right from the start. So, you know, this year, like, like you mentioned, we're not in the NCAA. We are following <clears throat> NCAA rules, um, you know, very, very closely because I want this to be as close to, you know, this year is close to next year as possible. Um, but we were able to, you know, mix in a few more practices in the fall because um, we were, you know, able to do that. Um, so we had a, you know, full fall. I think we had 25 practices and um, a lot of them over at New Britain Stadium, which will be our home field for this year. Um, you mentioned we got our field coming next year or this fall, hopefully. Um, so I'm very excited about that. But, um, you know, we, we really just started, started teaching them what our brand of baseball looks like. Um, you know, we really from day one started breaking down the basics of taking a turn on first base at the inside corner of the bag, um, creating, create an angle from second to home, like literally started at ground zero with these guys. And, mm. you know, we're starting to kind of build up, you know, now we're into the preseason. Um, we had our, we had a scrimmage against Mitchell today. Mm. Um, and I feel like we're starting to kind of get a foundation to build off of. And I always say, you know, obviously we have 28, no, 30 of our 32 guys are freshmen. So 30 freshmen. Um, but as you get farther into the spring semester, they're really not freshmen anymore. Um, so, you know, I'm starting to see them kind of understand our expectation a little more. They're, they're growing up. And my expectation for them is, is raising really every day. Um, that that's really been it, you know, um, getting them on campus, getting them accustomed to life at USJ off the field too. Um, you know, and instilling our rules like we have a lot our, our culture is we have a high expectation of how they act as human beings off the field too so you know getting them to to buy into that culture it's been a huge part of these first few months too um but now we're you know we're getting to the fun part it's 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 almost baseball season i know your tweet earlier said it's snowing it's snowing in my house right now in coventry but um you know we played baseball today so we're, we're getting to the fun part you know, I think uh, being able to have the games is awesome because it, it kind of keeps the kids, uh, you know, looking forward, yeah. wanting to be able to play because, yep. you know, you and I going back and forth and talking about, you know, having the opportunities and being able to improve on things uh, to bring up uh, something that happened like years ago, decades ago. I remember uh, SMU when they had the death penalty and they yeah. couldn't play football for a couple of years. And then when the program was back, they had in terms of what you guys have right now, which is a JV schedule, not a lot of games. And to keep the players motivated when the program was back from the death penalty, um, they had like a, a ticker, which was this how many days until the I forgot the team. But that's what helped them look forward to that. Mm. Um, for you guys, not to bring up the death penalty, because that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Stuff. we're gonna say we're gonna steer well clear of that. Everyone. Yes, <laughs> let's do that. Let's do that. But um, you know, is there something like that where it, you know, if, if there's a couple days where maybe the team's not in it, lack of focus, or have you just not dealt with that yet because it's still early? They are so energized, so I almost need to like reel them back sometimes like tonight we I mean we got our butts kicked um, by one of the better teams in New England um, and I had to remind them like we're scrimmaging right now like we're preparing for our season I don't really care what the score is I care about what our process is because um, they were amped up like they wanted to win and that's awesome like I want them to want to win I want to win mm -hmm. um, 
but at the same time, like they need to understand that this is, you know, this is a process. So they're just, they haven't been around it yet. So they don't under, they don't quite comprehend Mm -hmm. that part yet. If that makes sense. Um, At the same time, like we're, we're establishing a winning culture. I'm not going to use the first year program as a crutch. I told them that tonight, like we played one of the best teams in the region in my opinion, um, they win their league every year, they go to regionals, they, they do well there. Um, we want to be where they are quickly. So, you know, tonight we saw the difference and I, I don't think it's necessarily a talent thing. They just did, they did little things better than we did. Um, so going back to like, you know, you're talking about the importance of having a schedule this year. That's mm-hmm. where it lies for me is experience. Um, you know, they, tonight they doubled their amount of college baseball games they've played in their careers. We played one fall game and now tonight they played their second college baseball game ever. So, um, to get them experience, the only way to get experience is to get experience. Um, so that's, that's really the biggest thing for me. The energy, I don't worry about them, um, being engaged. They, they bring it every single day. Some days better than others. You know, they're 18, 19 year old college guys, but energy is the least of my worries with them. It's, it's getting them engaged and, um, making sure that they're, they're getting experience. So next year, when it's our, you know, our first NCAA season, there is, you see us take the field and you're, you, it looks like we've been doing it for 40 years. Um, Cause that's the expectation. Well, there's another part too, uh, Adam, as far as the, the fact that 30 of the 32 are freshmen. And like you said, even though uh, they're towards the end of their freshman, you could say uh, year per se, because yep. it's, we're getting close at the end of the semester in the spring. Um, like you mentioned, as far as the amount of games that they've played compared to not played, and then you're facing a team like Mitchell perennial, they win their conference. They make it to regional supers. They always do a great job. Uh, you know, they're kind of the teams that you look at as far as, Hey, they do it right. And, you know, they always have good players and, you know, they always find the talent. Um, I would think when, you know, if these guys can stick together and it seems like you are building the right culture. So let's say two years down the road. So these kids are juniors and such. I think they'll look back at that game and I'm sure you'll bring it up and I'm sure it'll be not laughed at, but it's like, Hey, remember two years ago when we were here and, or there, and now we're here, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? hundred percent, hundred percent. And that was my message tonight um, to them was, like the results were what they were, um, but just I wanted them to like re-energize their focus into the process of why they're as good as they are, um, because that and them understanding like, you know, w- why we tell them what we tell them, there's a reason behind it, right? Because like they, every little detail, like we care about and, and we we practice really, really hard and we we, we have a high expectation for them um, and attention to detail is prevalent in our program from, you know, what time they wake up in the morning and getting to class to, like I said earlier, like hitting the inside corner around in first base. Um, so like, we're not there yet where, you know, the effort is there and the attention to detail and practice is there, but going back to experience, like it's just not, tra- it hasn't translated to the game yet. And mm-hmm. there's no doubt that, you know, as they get more experience, um, and they get more reps under their belt that we're going to be, we're going to be good. We're going to be really good. And and this, this group that we have on campus right now is going to be a big reason why. And obviously, you know, we're going to bring in young guys every year that'll, you know, continue to build on, on what they're, they're laying the foundation for right now. But this group is, is special. Um, they're my, they're our first team ever at USJ. They're my first team ever. So like mm-hmm. emotionally, you know, they're, they're special to me, but, you know, we're lucky as, as a program that we got the human beings and the, and the talent that we got as late as we got it, um, because they're really going to be the, in my opinion, this group will be the core of the first conference championship team in, in school history. So, you know, I got to ask as a former pitcher, because I look out for the pitchers, but also the catchers as well. So I have to ask, especially with it being these guys first times working together uh, in the scrimmage against Mitchell, yeah. but just the fact of, again, they're freshmen, there's going to be uh, growing mistakes. It's one thing to do. I remember hearing this from older guys when I was a freshman at Albertus, as far as there's a difference between live in a cage when mm-hmm. there's stuff in the background where depending like for, you know, cause we were in a gym. I don't know if you guys are in your gym or not. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, sometimes the background could be white, it yep. could be blue, 
you know, because Albertus and, you know, St. Joe's are kind of the same colors. And then once you go outside, it's a lot different. The air, um, everything, the controlled environment. Um, what was it like when you saw the game today with Mitchell as far as, I understand the results. That's whatever. It's outside, whatnot. But yep. as far as what, you you know, the sequencing, the movement from the catchers, the calling, was there a lot of shakeoffs? Was it smooth? Just talk to me about that. No, I think – even like when, so there was a lot of good. So like before, you know, I want to throw that in there too. Like we learned a lot about our group and a lot of players, a lot of our guys had a really good day today. Um, you know, I, I talking to people after the game, like they're, they're, people are impressed. Um, so wanted to throw that in there too, but um, even when things weren't going well, they held their composure very, very well. Um, I'd say 99% of the time, which is really what I'm looking for is, yeah, it's easy to it's easy to be composed and, and slow the game down when when things are going right. But who are you when the game is not going the way you want it to? When when the crap hits the fan, mm -hmm. can you be a guy that we can rely on? And I think you know there were guys that you know threw strikes and got barreled, and you know held their composure and just kept being who they were on the mound. There were some guys that had troubles finding the strike zone, but they weren't you know looking into the dugout or you know yelling at their catcher or whatever, like they were composed. Um, and that for me, being as young as they are, that's something I'm looking for, right. Is, you know, cause it goes back to the culture of our program and, and being accountable and um, you do, doing the little things, right. Baseball is a game where you can't control, especially on the mound, you being a pitcher, my, I, myself being a pitcher in college, like once that ball leaves your hand, you have zero control over the outcome. Um, so, you know, getting them to do everything, from when they catch the ball back from the, from the catcher to when the ball releases their hand, getting doing that stuff. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I thought the game didn't really speed up on them um, on the mound. I thought, you know, our, our catcher chase behind the plate did a good job sequencing. Um, that's an ever, he, he calls, you know, our catchers call their own game. Um, something that, you know, I'm, I'm actually new to, I've always called called games, but i um, seeing, seeing benefits of allowing them to call the game. And that's something that we're going to keep having conversations about, um, you know, um, but I thought overall, you know, the errors came in bunches, but, you know, those, everything in between that, you know, we played good baseball. So now, as far as the hitters are concerned as well, to kind of flip the page, we talked about the catching with the sequencing pitchers being able to hold their composure for the hitting aspect. Um, uh, you know, again, to go back to being inside to outside, it's a little bit easier when you're inside. Cause again, the controlled environment and just various reasons as far as being inside yeah. or outside, being able to track the pitches, being able to pick up spin could be a little bit easier or more difficult. Um, for your hitters today, again, the weather wasn't very good. You probably were facing mostly some of the top arms that Mitchell had in the beginning of the game until depending on what happened later on. Um, what's your feedback as far as from the hit, uh, the hitters from your yeah, team? Yeah, I'll tell you the same thing I told them. I thought some guys had really good days. Um, the biggest thing that we didn't do well was our two strike approach um, struck out too much. Um, but I'll, I'll say like our, our aggressiveness and plus counts was really, really good. Like we had some guys take some, some two Oh daddy hacks and like just miss, just miss foul right back. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we hit, we had a couple extra base hits, burned a couple outfielders. Um, so we, we feel really good about, you know, where we're at offensively. Um, really the biggest issues today were going back to being inside Um or reads from reads in the outfield. Um, like we got it. We had a couple line drive reads that, you know, burned us a little bit and then walking guys on the mound. Um, those are the two biggest things, but I, I think offensively, you know, not, I wouldn't say necessarily top to bottom, you know, like we didn't put on a, a laser show, but our, our approaches were, were pretty good. Um, and there were some guys that, you know, we're just on a barrel. Um, you know, I, you know, they, a lot of them had four at bats and they were on a barrel for for a large majority of those so we feel good about it um like i said learning about the group what we need to work on now tomorrow you best believe we're working on our two strike approach um you know that's something we feel like we we've hit on with them but you know the game tells us what they need to work on and um, that's something we're gonna we're gonna hit on hard in the next week or two now are your games are, are you because i know with the way that technology has grown with with blast motion as far as being able to measure the bat speed as far as when the bat hits the baseball and then it launches 
Um, and then rap Zoto measuring spin yep. rate, pitch movement, the whole nine. Um, and I know that stuff is pretty pricey, but it, it does, you know, have the blue Jays been able to kind of use the technology that we have in the 21st, 22nd, whatever century we're in, as far as being able to help these kids who are freshmen, the 30 out of the 32 to, sh you know, I think the best thing about technology is being able to visually show the kids, Hey, yep. this is why you missed the two Oh, you know, the right down the middle, you missed the, you know, a chance to be able to hit a dinger or whatever, yep. or for the pitcher being able to show why he was missing certain parts of the plate. His knee was dropping here. The arm was kind of dropping. The glove was over here, whatever the case may be. Um, have you guys been able to utilize that or will you at some point? That's something we're definitely going to. We haven't, we haven't, um, you know, gotten it yet. We, you know, at my previous, when I was at Nichols, we, we had um, Rap Soto hitting and pitching. We used it a good amount. Um, so we'll get there with that. Um, I think right now our biggest, our issues are things that we can like, honestly talk about. Like, it's not even something we need to rep out. Like these guys are, are really, really talented baseball players. Um, so it's, it, we know they can do it. It's just getting it to translate. I mean, we hit, I mean, you can ask anybody on campus, we live in the cage. Um, like our guys get so many reps. Um, so that's, that's not even the biggest thing um, that I think we need to, to work on. It's just a mentality, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting the reps that we, we have, uh, we get on a daily basis to translate to the game. Um, you know, when we did have issues today, that was offensively, that was, that was really it. Um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, you know, we need to throw more BP, believe me, or, you know, we, we it wasn't we, that we even need to be challenged more. Like we, these guys are hitting off the hack attack um, every day. Like, you know, we go 90 mile an hour fastballs, 88 to 91. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they're barreling it. Um, we'll throw hack attack sliders at them, you know, all kinds of stuff. Like they get challenged every day. Um, so you're going to sense a theme here, Chris, but experience, right. And like getting, in, in between the ears, getting that, that, that work, because these guys work really hard. Um, can't take that away from them. Getting that to translate to the game um, is kind of the next step for these guys. I like the hack attack. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> that sounds pretty funny, but also cool at the same time. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like very, it's a good challenge. Let's put it that way. It's a good challenge. You can, you can do a lot of things with the hack attack. Sounds like something I would not being a pitcher and I'm not saying other pitchers can't hit. Cause I know Micah Owens who played back in the day with the D backs and the reds could hit. And there's some other dudes who can hit. I couldn't hit. So I feel like I wouldn't even touch the thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably not a good idea. If you're, uh, not, if you're not confident that you could hit, you know, 90 plus with, with high spin, cause you don't get much better spin rate talking about spin efficiency than on a, off a pitching machine. So definitely not. <laughs> but I can say though, one thing I was good at was bunting. I knew how to lay a bunt. Oh, we do that. We do that off the hack attack too. The guys love it. I hey, promise you, they love it. It's it's a part of the game, man. That I feel like is being lost. Major League Baseball with, I mean, and I was going to ask you too, and we're just about running out of time. But with the rules changing, I don't know if that's going to affect baseball at the college level. But man, I could just tell you right now, it's. I would much rather, and I've said this now for years. I would much rather, although realistically we're seeing a lot of the major league game trickling down to division one from yep. what I've seen, but yep. I would much rather watch college than major league baseball because the game is just not fun. It doesn't, it, it's well, they very, got, they got pizza boxes now for bases. You see those? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the bases <laughs> are huge. You can only throw to the base once I think per batter. Uh, obviously there's a pitch clock, which I'm okay with, but the biggest thing is, uh, Oh, and the shifting, you can't even shift anymore, but yep. There was, there was what, eight to 10 years where there was, okay, here's the shifts, make the adjustment, but they never made it. And now we're catering because of that. So let's make the bases look like uh, the size of a state. Yep. Sad, man. Yeah, no, that, the one thing that we will have next year at the D3 level is pitch clocks. So okay. going back to, going back to our field, um, we'll have pitch, we'll have two pitch clocks, one behind the plate, one in the, one in the outfield. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, for me, like my philosophy with our guys is I want to be able to do everything. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we practice everything. Um, hit and run, run and hit, bunt, bunt for hit, sack, slash, everything. Um, I, I never want there to be a time in a game where we feel like, that this, oh, this would be a perfect time to do this, but then we haven't worked on it. Um, so 
I'm not a, I'm not a small ball guy per se. I'm a let the game dictate what you need to do and be able to execute it well. Mm. Um, and to be able to do that, you need to, you need to work really hard um, if you want to be well-rounded baseball player. So, you know, I would like to think that we, we do that. Coach Goss, I appreciate you. You know, I appreciate you coming on. A lot of fun being able to talk with you about the program and such. Uh, best of luck the rest as far as with this inaugural season before you enter the inaugural NCAA season. It will be a lot of fun being able to you know follow you guys going forward. Uh, also, too, if you ever want any of your players uh, to come on here, uh, always welcome. Always trying to help out as far as Connecticut talent. And I know you've got some kids from Killingly that my guy, Coach Ben, down there in the ECC yep. for the uh, Killingly program. Uh, sending you guys some pretty good players and like you know like I said if you ever want them to come on any players always welcome yeah that'd be great thanks Chris uh definitely get some guys on here eventually enough uh definitely. enough looking at my ugly face so let's let's get it's all about them it's their program so we'll 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 get that we'll get that together awesome I'll wrap things up here on the Connecticut Sports Talent Show so until next time stay safe remember CT stands for Connecticut Talent I'm our journey find them all do their day everybody and be well